Welcome back to ID Labs. Today we're digging into the M Audio Pro Keys 88, um, mainly showing how to replace the key pivot, uh, but also I dig into some of the functionality of it, how it works, and then I wrap everything up at the end so you can see it all finished and put back together. So let's jump in. So if you look at these, you'll see that one of these broke and I tried to repair it. I got pretty good, pretty close. But uh, I got some of these in, and uh, they appear to be the same size. These are for a Nord. But if I look up close, to me, they look like they are, well, let's see if I can give you a camera angle of this. There it is. And uh, they appear to be the same size. The problem is, what I now have to do is dismantle the entire keyboard because they're all on one bar as far as I can tell. So while I'm doing this, I want to explain what you're seeing. So the back of these keys, um, hopefully the GoPro, let me pop my camera off so I can shoot a close up of this. As you see there, there's a little slot in each of these keys and you put the screwdriver in the slot and you're pushing back. I'm doing this one handed, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. You're pushing back a little lever. You're actually pushing back this lever. Um, so let's cut to the wide shot so you can see it. There we go. Now, there's a little spring. You can see there is a little spring that helps the key snap back up. I'm going to take that spring off and put it in my little bucket. Underneath the key, the spring, the spring goes in this little hole and then this is the hammer mechanism. And you can see it moving. So the key pushes the hammer mechanism down. Um, the little, can't really see it. That's what that's what pushes the hammer mechanism down. That tiny little spot in there. This actually touches the rubber membrane, and I've got shadows. Let me adjust one of my lights here. I didn't turn the other one around. Hey, there we go. All right. Okay. So you can kind of see it. It's a little dark. But uh, that rubber membrane goes down and up. And on the back of it, grab one. back of it you can see there we go these are carbon discs and they touch contacts down underneath here I'm not gonna lift it up but they touch the contacts underneath um, and what if you look close if you look close <laughs> this is so clunky sorry I'm kind of in my own shots but um, one of the bottom discs is farther up than the other. Um, and that measures velocity. So then it's it sits down and the, the key presses it up and down. The problem this keyboard had was that um, one of those membranes was torn and so the key would stay, the sustain would stay down on it. 
even though the key would pop up, the sustain would stay. So I've repaired that. Uh, you'll see that in a minute as I take more of these keys off. So let me put my camera back up on here. There we go. The beauty of this, I mean, number one, number one, a lot of keyboards are built the same way. So these membranes are interchangeable. A bunch of the keyboard key beds are all made from the same company. This key bed, I'm almost positive, shares the exact same key bed as the Pro, as the uh, KeyStation 88 Pro. But let me take a few more keys off. And you've got to be careful. I think I was probably a tiny bit careless. And this plastic is old. Let me find my little bin. <clears throat> yeah. Knocking things off. Okay. These are great. Uh, <laughs> if you don't have one of these and you do this kind of work, I got to get some more of these. This is a magnetic bowl from uh, Harbor Freight. So you just have to be cautious. And I've got a little Harbor Freight bucket on the floor I'm putting the keys in. The only real drawback to this is... Uh, you hurt your finger. Your fingers get kind of sore. I probably could use gloves to help with that. But as you can see, and the black keys. I'll show you this. Yeah, you kind of see it with the other hand. The black keys hook into this smaller spot on this on this one. The DX7 is completely different than this. Um, but the black keys hook under there, and then when you tip this back you push down and that little clip snaps in place and uh, keeps the key on unless the little clip snaps off which is what happened it got bent back and I tried to fix it and it snapped it right off so also if you're wondering why I'm just willy-nilly tossing keys in a bucket let's see if you can see this <laughs> It won't focus. It won't focus, but there are numbers on the bottoms, on the ends of the keys. One, two, three, four, five, six. The black keys are seven, and then eight is the B, and then it starts over with the one. And then all the way at the end is the nine. And all the way at the beginning um, is ten, which is the beginning A. So I'll speed this up. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Before I do that, you can see I only patched four keys because I wanted the rest to stay as factory as possible. So there's, there's the fixed. It's got a lighter color. All right. Let's pop all of these off. Okay, one other interesting note is these keys can also be used on non-hammered keyboards. On non-hammered keyboards, I'm not sure, they probably still have this, but in place of the spring here underneath, they put a spring behind it. In fact, this keyboard could handle that if it didn't have the hammers. Um, it hooks underneath this back piece and up into this and holds it and pulls it back up. But this one doesn't need that, so. All right. Now the problem is how do we get this bar off of here? And is it all one piece? It appears to all be one piece. Yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can push it. This is the point where I pause the video and I look up on 
online to see how to do this because I've never done this one before and I do not want to break it. So I'm going to pause everything and come back. Okay, this is a screenshot from uh, some instructions I found on how to get the rod out. And I just love the, you'll be losing your religion. So uh, the reason I, I did an extra voiceover for this after the fact, because I forgot and had my phone playing a podcast while I was shooting this. So um, you just won't hear the sound from it, but I'm just using a pair of pliers and gripping the end of it and tapping it out. Now I've sped it up here, so you don't have to watch me do it for 10 minutes. Um, moving my camera around. So I'm checking to see how far the rod goes on one side and then moving to the other side, tapping it a little farther. And um, this was really easy to get out. There you go, there's the broken piece with my patch job on it. And now back to the regular voiceover. Okay, so this was pretty successful and not nearly as bad as the uh, screenshot made it look. So now the moment of truth is As far as I can tell, the only difference is inside the little clip. Otherwise, let me look. What'll matter is the fulcrum itself. This one's probably a bad test too since I, let me take one that's good. All right. So, they're not the same, so the question will be, if I put one on here, will it still hold the key, or do I need to modify it? So, with that on there, um, let's tap the, let's tap this back in place. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. Okay. Well, for one, it's not loose. So I'm going to have to do something to loosen it a bit. But regardless of the looseness, let's take a look at whether or not thumps around or anything so let's just pause here shall we and notice the fact that I have the wrong key in my hand which is part of the reason it doesn't fit now there are other reasons as you'll see here but I'm not holding a C and it takes me a while before I figure that out now back to the show It's, it's wider, maybe? Let's try this one. Right. That one pops right on. <laughs> Getting it off, though. Okay. Yeah, I think it's wider. Let's see. This sits right on top, and this one does not. So let's take a look at one of these. But I think I can probably modify it. Yeah, it is too big. So let's take a look at one of these. That fits exactly, and this one It's too big, yeah, the clip. So I'm gonna sand it down and see if I can make it work. So 
So let's, uh, first thing we want to do shorten this a bit. Round it off. All right, what you're watching now is me filing down the Nord key pivot to make it as close to the shape of the M audio key pivot as I can get it. It's it turns out a little lopsided cuz I was kind of doing it in haste and I don't have yet. I don't really have a desk with a good clamp and you know, the right tools. Um, but the file worked. So I filed the sides so it wasn't as wide. I smoothed the top out a bit more, um, sanded it a bit. See, I just kept checking to see if it would snap in. And then, uh, you saw it go by quick, but the heat gun, um, I do it again here toward the end. I used the heat gun, to soften it and pull the clip portion out. So it was, the angle was a little farther away from the body of the clip. Um, and then I also tried to make the holes a little bigger. So it was a little looser on the shaft. Um, so you can see me just going back and forth and back and forth here. I got a little helping hand and I tried and it, it's actually didn't really work. It's not made for that. It's made for photos. Um, I still haven't figured out that I need to use the C key, um, but I'll figure it out soon here. And uh, now you can see the results of all of that filing. All right. It's still not, all right, hang on. This feels like I'm so close. Let's... All right, hang on. All right. Well, that definitely stays in. It's in there. So that part's good. I don't know if I got it enough. Oh. Uh oh. Lost one. Okay. Yeah, it still isn't. I think it's off center. Something's not right with it. If it's too high, well, let's see. Oh, that might not even be the right key. We have a winner. <laughs> this whole time I might not have the right key for that um, so uh, well oh here we go I 
I think it's a C. So here I am doing all this work and not paying attention. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Maybe it's a one. Yeah, I think it's a one. There we go. Huh. Well, that seems to work. Let me try it with the spring. I still am missing one of these, so I'll have to hunt that down. Trial and error. Oh, didn't get it on there. And that'll be the other issue. Is it's got to stay on or the key pops off periodically and that you can't have that. Yeah. It's not staying on there. For some reason, it's not staying on. But what I want to see is um, two. Yeah. The other issue is no. No, it works. I just have to make sure that the clip is right. So it worked after all that. But no, well, it's on there now. Sweet. So there you go. That is a uh, it's one way to do it. <laughs> Optimally would be to buy the right piece. Okay, I have rigged up some cameras and a microphone and some lights. And uh, this is the finished Pro Keys 88. I'll shoot a few close-ups so you can see the, uh, the vinyl wrap that I put on it. Um, which I think looks way better than the old wrinkled... I can't do much about this gray unless I wanted to learn how to screen print on these things. So um, I didn't really do anything to that. All of the LEDs have been replaced. The two, the treble and bass pots have been replaced. Everything works on this except the jazz ride button. And I have no idea why. It lights up, but somewhere in the, I, in the IC chips or, you know, integrated circuits or on the board somewhere, what it's supposed to do is when you play the bass and you turn on the jazz ride, you should hear a ride cymbal. And I just, you just don't. So, um, this is pretty basic. You got 14 sounds, you got a piano. Let's see if I can do this without shaking everything. Pretty 90s sound. Um, you'll see these lights going on off and on. When I go to piano two, just turns the reverb on, but it turns off the velocity curve. So you can't play it quiet. But you can, you can turn it on and add it to it. So you can override whatever the presets are. We got electric piano. That kind of grungy one. We have the FM. So I'm doing this at a really funny angle. 
I'm trying to reach the keyboard, so bear with me. Um, a second one. Now, before I go through the rest of the sounds, there's a layer, there's a split and a layer function. And the, the layer function, punch layer and then punch the other one. Now we've got, I've got both electric pianos stacked. And you just turn the layer off, it goes back. Clove. Now there's a, I don't know if you can see this in the close shot, but the wide shot, there's a grand piano button here that turns off all the layers, turns off anything. It's like a piano panic button. Um, it really just turns on piano one with the velocity and the reverb. Pretty sure. Yeah. It turns up the reverb a little higher. Which I'm not going to get into, but you got vibes. Organ. And I'm not an organ player, so I'm not even going to try. Strings. Warm pad. Which is really nice if you layer it with the piano. And you can turn the layer volume down. Interesting thing is that the pad is really, it's loud on the high end compared to. Oh, let me turn off that. Then you've got acoustic bass. And electric bass. And the electric bass, if you go up past a certain point, it goes into harmonics. There's a bunch of demo songs, <laughs> which I won't run. Um, split, yeah, reverb. Uh, I think that's about it. It's a really cool board. The action, it is hammer weighted, as you saw. It's a bit loud if you were just in a quiet room, but um, if you were pumping this through a sound system, which you're gonna need to anyway, because it doesn't have speakers. Oh, and the mod wheel and the, you can't see them in, the, well, you can see them in the wide shot, but let's see. Now you can hear it change. Or the organ. And the pitch bend works. So that is the uh, M-Audio Pro Keys 88. I think it looks way better with the fake wood grain on it, um, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I did bleach the keys. Uh, they are not perfect, and some of them are whiter than others. It's a whole lot less yellow than it was when I started. So it's a great unit, and it's been a fun project. Took a little longer than I planned, but um, at least now I know all the ins and outs of these and how to repair or replace even the parts that I can't find anywhere. Uh, so that was good. And um, Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I enjoyed working on this and showing all the ins and outs. Um, I'd love for you to subscribe and uh, come back for more. I'm gonna have more keyboards coming up. Eventually I'll have the, the DX7, but it's still in pieces and I still can't get sound out of it. So <laughs> I've got a lot of footage recorded, but that one's still a work in progress. Um, so subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.